Today we're going to practice making rotations. Rotations are one of the transformations you can do to a shape when you are trying to spin it around a fixed point. To begin, we need to understand the difference between clockwise and counterclockwise. When you see the word clockwise, you're knowing, you know you're talking about the way something spins like the hands on a clock would spin. So if I were to take this and rotate it clockwise, I would want to spin it just like the hands on the clock go, from 12 to 1 to 2 to 3 and so on. This direction here would be considered clockwise because it's the way the hands on a clock would spin. Counterclockwise is the opposite of that direction. It would be going around backwards around the clock. So if I'm starting at 12 and I want to go counterclockwise, I would want to go backwards around the clock. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, so on and so forth. It doesn't matter where you are on the clock. You can still figure out counterclockwise and clockwise by thinking about which direction the hand would go next. So if I start at 2, and I want to go clockwise, I would think about what would come next going the correct way around the clock. Well, that would be 3, 4, 5, 6, so on and so forth. If I'm at 8 and I want to change and go counterclockwise, I'm thinking about going backwards around the clock. So if I can magically stop the clock and start spinning it backwards, which way would it go? Well, it would go from 8 to 7 to 6 to 5 and so forth. So clockwise is the way the hands on the clock go normally, to the right, and counterclockwise is the way they go if they were to be spun backwards, to the left. Now that we have an idea of which way is clockwise and which way is counterclockwise, we need to have some basic understanding of fractions. A lot of the time with rotations, they'll say that they want you to do a quarter rotation or a half rotation. In order for you to know how much to spin the hands, you have to know what that fraction means. Fractions are written with a top number and a bottom number. The top number is called the numerator, the bottom number is called the denominator. Let's start with the denominator, the bottom number. The denominator tells you how many pieces would make up one whole unit. So in this square right here, I can see that there are one, two whole, or two pieces to make it whole again. So in the bottom number, I'm going to go ahead and type in 2, because I know that there needs to be two pieces to fill in this shape and make it whole. The top number tells you how many pieces are covered up. So if I were just to drag this one rectangle over, I would have 1 over 2, which is red, 1 half. If I were to drag the second one over, I would now have two of the pieces covered up. So that would be 2 over 2, or 2 halves. When a 2 is in the bottom, it's read as a half. So again, if I just have one of them covered up, that would be 1 half, because one piece is covered up, and there is a possibility of putting two pieces in the whole shape. If we break it down even smaller, I'd have to change that fraction. In this whole square, I can see that there is 1, 2, 3, 4 pieces. So my denominator, my bottom number, should be 4. It never matters how many I cover up out of it, the denominator will always be 4 because that's how many pieces go in one whole. 1, 2, 3, 4. The top number tells me how many pieces are covered up. So if I cover up one of those pieces, I would have 1 out of 4. This is read as 1 fourth or 1 quarter. You can think of it like a dollar bill. You know that there's 4 quarters in a dollar, just like there are 4 pieces in this picture. So this is one fourth or one quarter. If I put two of the little squares on, now I've covered up two of the pieces, so I need to change my top number. This is two fourths or two quarters. What about if I put three on? What would that be called? Well, I need to change the top number now because now three of the pieces are covered. If you said it could be read as three fourths or three quarters would be correct. Finally, if I take that last piece and cover it up, I now have one, two, three, four pieces covered, so I need to change my numerator, my top number, and I would read this as four fourths or four quarters. For rotations, most of the time what you're going to end up seeing is something that looks like this, so it would be three quarters, or you'll only be dealing with one of them, which would be one quarter. So to help us, 
We're going to use that example of a clock and start thinking about fractions. I've taken my face of my clock and I've divided it into four sections. So I know I've divided them into quarters because we just learned that there's four quarters in a dollar. And so if you have four pieces in a whole, just like four quarters in a dollar, we can call those quarters. If I have a one quarter rotation, it means that I'm spinning around this much of the clock. If I have a half rotation, that means I'd be spinning around from 12 to 6 because that would be halfway around the clock. If I have a three-quarter rotation, I would need to be able to go through three out of the four pieces. So that would be one piece, two pieces, and three pieces. I can do the same going counterclockwise, going backward. A one-quarter rotation would go through one of the pieces backward. That would be this much of the clock. Half a rotation counterclockwise would be going through half of the clock, but going backward. Well, halfway around the clock, or half of the hour, I know is down here on the sixth. So this right here would be as far as I would go for a half rotation counterclockwise. Finally, a three-quarter turn rotation counterclockwise would go through three out of the four pieces going backward. So that would be one, two, three. You can see that the three-quarter rotation is a pretty big rotation if it goes through most of the clock, three out of the four pieces. So how can clocks keep helping us with the rotations when we only see this much of the drawing? All we really have are the hands and they're pointing straight up at the 12. What you can do to help yourself is to actually draw the clock around the hand. So the first thing that you would want to do is put that circle. Remember, the center here, that's like the screw in the middle of the clock. So your dot should be in the center of the circle. Next, you need to remember where did those lines go through when I divided my hands into quarter, or the clock into quarters. I remember one was pointing at 12. I know when I did a half rotation, it was down here at the 6. Those other lines would be the opposite size of the clock. So that would be at the 3 and at the 9. If I draw this much onto my picture, chances are good it's going to help me with those rotations. Now I can think of the clock, and it'll help me to know which direction is clockwise and which direction is counterclockwise. It also helps me because it gives me all this room down here at the bottom, so that if I do have a half rotation, I have room to draw that hand pointing down to the six. So whenever you're thinking about doing rotation, don't worry about drawing the face of the clock on your paper. All of your teachers will be fine with it, and it'll help you to know the directions of clockwise and counterclockwise. It'll also help you to have something to aim at when you're doing quarter rotation. I know when I'm doing a quarter rotation that I'm going to be aiming at the three or at the nine based on which direction I'm going. So go ahead and draw those 12, 6, 3, and 9 on your paper to help you with your rotation. Let's practice one now that we have the hands drawn. Let's say I do want to do a quarter rotation clockwise. The first thing I need to think about is which direction is clockwise. Clockwise, I remember, is going the same way that the hands on the clock would go. So if I take my line and I start to rotate it, I need to go the direction that the hands on the clock would go. That would be from 12 to 1 to 2, on and on and on. Now I need to know where to stop my rotation. I want to go one quarter of the way around the clock. I remember that is one out of four pieces. In my head I visualize that clock and I visualize putting those lines from 12 to 6 and 3 to 9. Can you visualize a line between 12 and 6 and 3 and 9? If I want a quarter rotation, I only want one of those pieces being rotated. And I remember I'm going clockwise. So if I only go one of the pieces, I would end up stopping here at the three. Now, I know that I rotated it the correct direction because I was the one spinning the hand. But someone who just looks at this isn't sure if I rotated it from 12 to three or if I rotated it from 12 to nine to six to three. So I need to add an arrow so that they know which way I went. I went from 12 to 3, so I need to add an arrow to let them know that was the way that I rotated. Let's try another one. I need to get my hands back up to their starting point. This time let's do a half rotation going counterclockwise. First thing I need to figure out is which direction is counterclockwise. I remember counterclockwise is going backwards around the clock. So I'm going to be going backwards, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 
but I'm not sure how far to go. That's when I look at that fraction, a half rotation. Well, I know halfway around the clock would be down at the 6, just like half an hour is 30 minutes, which is when the hand is pointing on the 6. So I'm going to keep rotating, rotating counterclockwise until I get down to the 6. Now, I know I went the correct direction because I was the one rotating. But someone who just looks at this picture doesn't know if I went from 12 to 3 to 6, which is clockwise, or 12 to 9 to 6, which is counterclockwise. I want to make sure that I tell them that I went counterclockwise. So I'm going to draw a curved arrow saying I went from 12 to 9 and from 9 to 6. 